Hey, what's up everybody out there in YouTube land? Elric Ferris, Editor-in-Chief. Welcome once again back to our YouTube channel here on, well, yeah, YouTube. So, Sandy Bridge has come out. We've brought you a few motherboards. We actually brought you the ASUS previous one of this one, which was actually the P8 P67 Deluxe. Today, we're gonna bring you the full review of the new ASUS P8 P67 Pro. Now, just to tell you the real difference between the two, the Deluxe motherboard just has a few more features for overclocking and onboard adjustment than the Pro. But beyond that, they have a lot of the same features. So let's move in, take a look at the board, its features, how fast it is, and at the end of the day, whether it's worth your money as the end user. So here we take a look at the actual motherboard layout of the new ASUS P8 P67 Pro. We start out up here. This is the new 1155 ZIF socket that supports the new second generation Intel iCore CPUs. This is the new i7, i5, and i3 CPUs. The difference between the first core and the second core generation CPUs is that these new ones have a built-in GPU processor embedded within them. As you can see, right around the board area here, there's plenty of room for an aftermarket cooler. Most of them will fit within these fins. These fins actually right here are actually keeping the motherboard cool by taking the heat off all the capacitors right here and dissipating it away from the board. So jumping over to the memory, we can see that we have four DIMM slots that support DDR3 memory up to 2133 megahertz. It also supports dual channel memory. Now, 32 gigabytes of memory is what's currently supported, but you can only buy four gigabyte chips at this time. The eight gigabyte chips will jump onto the market later. Then we have the 24 pin power which is on all motherboards. Then we have a breakaway little thing here for a USB 3.0 breakaway box. Then we come over here and we have the EPU, the energy processing unit. A little quick info on the energy processing unit. What it does when you switch it on is it helps maintain the power of your motherboard through its VPM which basically uses a 16 plus two phase power conditioner. This actually helps regulate all the power to your motherboard. When your motherboard needs additional power, it provides it when it's in like standby mode, it gives it less power, helping to save energy on the motherboard. It's one of the main features of ASUS's motherboards. For PCI expansion slots, you get quite a good variety. You get two of the second generation 16X PCI lanes. Now these run in 8X, 8X mode if you're running them in Crossfire or SLI mode. You also get a 4X one, which is the black slot here, followed by two standard PCI 2.0 slots and then the new PCI X 1X slots. This one is very close to the rear IO and I'd imagine that's not going to be very usable. There's also a little connection here if you want to run an additional outside SPDIF switch. And then there's the TPU. Now, this is the Turbo V processing unit. This is one of the major features of the motherboard. This helps with the overclocking. Switching this on and off allows almost single one-touch overclocking from within the BIOS. Also, we have two connections here, actually three connections here for your standard USB breakaway. This could be either for a front panel on a case or anything else like that you want to use. Over here on the far side, these are all the connections for connecting your case to the motherboard, such as your power on switch and the rest. Looking at the SATA ports, you can see you get quite a bit. All together, there are two, four, six, eight all together, with these two right here being your standard three gigabit connectors, these ones right here being your six gigabit connectors. The blue one is by Marvell, and the white one is by Intel, supporting RAID modes up to 0, 1, 5, and 10. The Marvell one only supports RAID 0 and 1. So last but not least, we're gonna take a look at the rear I.O. Many motherboards nowadays have a combo PS2 keyboard port. With this motherboard, you get actually a legacy keyboard and a legacy mouse port. Then you get both your coaxial and your SPDIF output for your audio. This right here, this is your BT to go feature. What this is, is Bluetooth to go. You can actually do overclocking and other settings from your Bluetooth to go thing right from your phone. A pretty cool feature. These red ports right here, these are your standard USB 2.0 ports. Below here, we have an eSATA port. And then to the right of that, we have an actual powered eSATA port. Then above that, we have your IEEE or Firewire. Then you have two more standard USB ports, another set of USB standard ports. Then you have your USB 3.0 ports designated in blue right here. And then you have your LAN brought to you by the Intel chipset. Now, one thing between this and the deluxe board is the deluxe board actually has two of LAN ports. This one only has a single. Then down here finally are all of your standard old school analog controllers for your sound. The ALC892 by Realtek provides the audio channel and you get true 
eight surrounds, I mean, eight speaker surround sound audio. So that's the rear IO and you've seen the motherboard. Let's check out the performance now. So we've shown you all the features of the new ASUS P8 P67 Pro motherboard. Now this motherboard sells for about $189 online. You may be able to find it for cheaper if you look around. Now, this motherboard is not much different than the deluxe motherboard, just for a few more overclocking features and some onboard controls. So if you're not looking to spend a lot of money, but you still want a motherboard that's kind of geared towards the enthusiast, this may just be your cup of tea. I like the features, I like the ASUS name, I like the layout of the board, everything about this is all top notch. At the end of the day, I give the new ASUS P8 P67 Pro a hot product award here on the motherboards.org YouTube channel. Thanks for watching.